for those English language teacher trainers who are perhaps designing classes for English language learners, I want to give you some ideas about how you can use AI and how you can go about creating a prompt or several prompts that might help you in your lesson planning and subsequently might help you in your teaching practice overall, even afterwards reflecting on your experience using that lesson plan and how it ended up uh, in the classroom experience. I want to share with you an example. This is for a 15-minute class. And for those of you who are taking Teaching Workshop 2, most of what you're doing is thinking in terms of 15-minute classes or 15-minute segments where you're using different stages or implementing different stages in your planning and in the class itself. So in this example, I wanted to share with you both the prompt and also wanted to share with you the output. And I have not modified the output whatsoever, but I think we can gain some insight and perhaps uh, we can learn more about lesson planning by looking at the example here and then seeing how we can modify it to our particular context regarding our particular set of preferences as an instructor. So here I have the prompt, design a 15-minute class for English language learners who are 16 to 18 years old at a B1 to B2 English proficiency level according to the Common European Framework of References. The lesson should focus on listening comprehension and include various teaching techniques. For example, pausing, stop and go, alerts, timeline, interactive, and respond. Now, notice here, and just using this as an example, depending on the type of lesson that you were focusing on, here I'm specifically indicating that I want a lesson that only focuses on listening comprehension, and I have listed examples of teaching techniques that I want to, to consider. Now, of course, you might experiment with different teaching techniques. These are not the only way to think about teaching techniques. You'll come across a lot of different ways of articulating and thinking about teaching techniques as it promotes the listening skill. But I want to draw your attention here that you probably will need to provide some examples in your prompt in order for the output to address or to include some of these examples. Otherwise, you're likely not to get specific teaching techniques. You may get a few, but you may not get what you're looking for. So again, include examples here. Feel free to substitute what I have here if you're looking for or just curious, how would I, how would I actually perform these other teaching techniques that I want to become more familiar with? Notice here I've indicated bottom-up, top-down theory, activating prior knowledge, accessing new content and language focus, and formative assessments that promote further learning. Now, you may or may not be uh, focusing specifically on formative assessments, but I wanted to include that aspect as well in addition to accessing information and activating. This also might be considered evaluation or testing students, depending on, again, what kind of assessments you want to try to include in that particular lesson. But in my case, 15-minute class, I'm not really interested in summative assessments. I'm not going to be testing the students. I primarily want to focus on formative assessments. So that was the reasoning behind choosing formative assessments for this particular prompt. Now, indicate, I, go, I continue on, indicate recommended time allotments for each stage of the learning sequence. Again, I'm putting in information that I want to see specifically in the lesson. So here, again, you're going to take liberties. You're going to make decisions about what you want to see in that lesson plan. And anytime you are experimenting with these different prompts and you input something and you don't get quite the output that you're looking for, then... You'll need to go back and experiment and reword uh, the prompts in order to get the desired results. So I conclude my prompt by also stating that I want my entire lesson to primarily focus on pair work. And we'll see what that looks like here in a minute. 
So this is the prompt. Again, the way that I'll set up this page that I'm going to be sharing with you, each prompt will be a toggle. So with this drop down arrow, you can expand and collapse the output. So here we have the output. Again, it is basically copy and pasted from ChatGPT. I have not modified this whatsoever to provide you an example of what you might be looking at and things that you might want to be changing here um, as you're evaluating your own output. But notice that it has a lesson title. It provides the level of the students, the duration of the lesson, and we have the objective to enhance listening comprehension skills among the English language learners by exploring urban legends through a combination of bottom up and top down strategies, utilizing various teaching techniques and incorporating pair work and formative assessment. I want to draw your attention here. We have two types of objectives. One is related to skills, enhance uh, listening comprehension skills. And we also have content. Exploring Urban Legends. Now in our class too, if you have been thinking about setting up understandings, this could be the basis of the understanding. You could create an understanding based on Wiggins and McTighe's understanding by design. Thinking about the six facets of understandings and really explore this idea, this content, set it up more specifically as a good understanding and that could be included in the objective but what i want to draw your attention to really is the importance of not only setting up objectives that relate to skills but also set up objectives that relate to content and in this case it does that for us i didn't input anything related to exploring urban legends but i could have that's something I could have included in my prompt if I wanted to or if I want to focus specifically on a certain type of content, a certain topic. I could have easily included that here, but I purposefully did not do that because I wanted to see what kind of output I got. Now, if I were to even just m either modify this prompt or copy and paste it and resubmit it over and over and over again, I'm likely to get different topics. Okay, so I'm just going to show one example here, but know that obviously you can regenerate this several times and see what kind of topics or even just overall variations of a lesson to see if there's one that you have a preference for. But here we have our topic, we have our skills through the combination of top down, bottom up strategies using various techniques. So notice that the third component of the objective relates to strategies and actually a fourth component relates to interactional pattern and the fifth is more related I think to a teaching technique but it also includes that's the objective right the objective is formative assessments helping based on teacher observation questioning the Socratic method just uh, checking homework, checking the progress in class in real time, seeing how students are, are performing, and making decisions in real time, whether you're scaling up or scaling down the lesson, whether you are um, making decisions in real time regarding formative assessments to either expand the activity or maybe limit the activity if students are struggling. So again, take a look at this objective. I think this provides a good example of the different components, the different types of an objective. Whenever you're focusing on your own lesson, consider the same skills, topic, some kind of strategy perhaps, and what's the objective of the 15 minute lesson? What kind of interactional pattern do you want to focus on? So maybe the focus is not, on, is not always on the whole group. Maybe you want to focus on small groups, pair work, maybe a combination of individual and pair work throughout the 15 minute lesson. That could also be stipulated here in the prompt. You could also mention that explicitly in the prompt that you want to focus on both pair work and individual work if you want to provide some kind of combination. All right, so moving on, materials. I'm just going to leave materials as is. This is going to be, depend a lot on the final decisions you make. Um, I, you know, probably would make some changes here, maybe some uh, 
adding different types of uh, materials or technologies that apply to your lesson. Think of materials as both materials and educational technologies or ticks. And so that could be included here. You'll probably need to modify something. Now, here in the learning sequence, because I indicate, indicated in my prompt that I wanted to have a time allocation for each of my stages, that's in fact what it did. And this is, I think, very useful to give you an idea of, number one, how many stages do I need in my 15-minute lesson? And number two, more or less, how long should I plan for each of those stages? And so my initial reaction here is that there are a lot of stages. For a 15-minute lesson, for me personally, this for is seems like a lot of stages. Only spending a couple of minutes on, on a stage. Perhaps, I don't know, um, I'm looking down here at formative assessment. I probably will not have a section on formative assessments. Formative assessment for me will be implemented throughout the lesson. So it's not going to be a, a separate stage. It's going to happen throughout. So I would probably eliminate that and modify, maybe add a minute to another, another stage. But it gives you a starting point. And notice that there's some activation going on. So you're scaffolding your teaching. You're trying to make connections of what the students already know versus what uh, what you want your students to learn. So this gives you some ideas here. It gives you a question, maybe an opening question that you can begin with, sharing it, some examples. So again, it gives you some recommendations. Not that you have to do this exactly. Uh, you, I always suggest that when you're using prompting and you're using AI to see what kind of output that it generates for you and then make changes based on your final decisions on how you want to plan for your class. Here we have a section on the introduction of the topic and it gives you some ideas, pre-listening predictions. So here we're starting to use different uh, teaching techniques that relate to listening comprehension. We have listening during the uh, audio and here we have a variety of techniques again you're probably not going to be using all of these maybe you use some of these but here it gives you some ideas some examples and from here you can make some final decisions about which ones to keep which ones to discard maybe even make some some variations or modifications to some of these based again on your student profile your um, your preferences as a, an instructor. Here we have our pair work. So notice here we're building up to the pair work. So we're not we're not uh, working in pairs, or your students aren't working in pairs throughout the entire 15 minute lesson, but they're building up to that pair work discussion. Two minutes. Maybe you want to have more than two minutes of pair work discussion. All right. So you can use this as a starting point, and then start to modify as you need to. T check the time allocation, determine how much time you want to spend on each of the stages, and then go from there. So we have formative assessment. Again, I mentioned I probably would remove that. But at the end, some kind of reflection or a wrap-up. Maybe you combine these two for, for concluding or summarizing or closing the class at the very end. But it does a, a pretty good job, I think. It gives you some ideas of at least a starting point, how you can sum up a class at the end and you have some kind of introduction towards the beginning or some kind of warm-up. Here we have a, just a summary of the time allocations. So if that's useful, it gives you this information and some kind of summary here at the bottom. So I would use this as a learning tool as a way to experiment with your own design, your own lesson planning. And maybe this format is not what you're using per se, maybe you're using a different format for your lesson plan, which is fine. But again, I think there's some value in using AI, see what kind of output you get, get some ideas, and then make final decisions based, again, on your per personal preference as an instructor, your student, student profile, 
the objectives of your lesson. And although that I'm showing, I'm only showing you one example using ChatGPT, you can also use Bard, of course, Google's Bard. And, you know, there are always new uh, AI spaces being developed and being used. Um, so you, uh, you're encouraged to experiment or, with different ways of modifying the prompts, different sources, different uh, online spaces to get different kind of results and just see which are most useful for you. What I would not do is simply base your lesson plan on the output as it is without making any changes because invariably number one you won't understand it uh, because you will not have really gone through and critiqued and 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 tailor it to your class and number two it may or may not be what you end up doing it may not relate to what you 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 do if you blindly create a lesson plan and don't understand it it's not likely that you're going to be sticking to that lesson plan or if you're not sticking to the lesson plan which sometimes happens you're not going to understand why you made certain decisions in real time during your class that deviated from the lesson that was different from the lesson plan so you need to get into the lesson plan understand it tailor it modify it and and then once you have completed your class be able to go back and create a, a, a reasoning behind making changes, which almost in all cases that happens. The last thing I'll mention that I'm just thinking about now as I'm looking at this is a theoretical rationale, some kind of th uh, theory or theory, theoretical framework that applies to your lesson. And so I failed to include that, which you also probably want to include and and you could include that here in your prompt the theoretical framework that applies to your to your lesson and you're likely to get that um in the output okay so i hope this helps experiment with it ask questions try it out see how it works for you if you have questions about how uh, to either generate alternative prompts or you have questions about how to make modifications or you want some suggestions about modifying certain aspects of the output those are things we can talk about in class or of course you can reach out to me and uh, we can discuss it uh, personally so this has been just a quick video talking about how to take an example of a prompt to look at how we can get some some ideas for uh, lesson planning in this case a 15-minute uh, lesson